So we're talking about how to handle technical interviews today. So here's what I want to do. If you guys have questions around this that you've maybe been asked in a technical interview, um, that you thought you handled well or handled poorly, throw it in chat. Um, and we'll talk about those questions specifically as well. I'll cue those up. Um, we'll talk about some other tips and things as well, but I want to kind of get those out there as well. If you guys have, you know, questions that you've, uh, that you've previously encountered, throw those in yeah. the chat. And, you know, you can always, you always can super chat us, buy us tacos today. And, uh, if you have a burning question, one that you have to get answered, um, we'll throw it up on the screen and we'll be ready. You know, otherwise try to answer. We'll just, yeah. Otherwise we'll just go down from there. Do as many as we can. Now, I will say this, Kevin, um, I promise this one. If you ask me something super technical and I don't know the answer to, um, and it gets on the show, um, I'll research it and try to send it back to you somehow, some way, maybe on our Discord channel or um, oh. on Twitter or somewhere like that. So like, um, so if you ask me you know, something that I just don't know off the top of my head, I'll research it and see what we can do. But like, seriously, ask anything you want to ask, you know, technical, non-technical, softballs. You know, what's I find interesting is the softball questions a lot of times give people the most problems. Yeah. You know, like they just don't like, uh, you know, and I think those are the easy ones. But yep. apparently I just think it's my years of experience doing this, trying to sell things. I take for granted of of the life experience I have. And then when I talk to people that are trying to do this for the first time, they're like, oh, wow, that's a good idea. You know, like, really? That's, <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's I just that. I just thought of it. Literally, like, it's, just like, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, so, I just uh, always have that ready. Yeah, so we're just going to be basic as possible, um, but we also want to get into the technical side, how you could prep and that kind of stuff. So, um, so just put your questions down in chat. We'll let's see what you got. Here's what else we're going to do too. We're going to do a giveaway. We're so, going to do a giveaway. Yeah. Tell you what it's going to be in a little bit, but we're going to do a yeah. giveaway too. Actually, we might do two giveaways, right? We'll do two. We might do two. Let's do two. We'll let's do, do two. two giveaways. We'll, we'll give two. away two things. We'll do two. Here, here's the thing: is unfortunately we have to ship this, so. We need to keep that in the continental United States so that, you know, it doesn't cost us like $200 to ship it somewhere over, <laughs> exactly. overseas. Yeah, we've made that mistake Unfortunately, in the past. you know, um, you know, just help us out with that, you know, but uh, if you win it and you say, hey, I'm in, you know, um, London, then we'll say, well, let's, let Sorry. us give it to someone else. Yeah. It's not that valuable. It's not like an Xbox or anything. So you're not going to be totally missing well, out. Don't you know, play it down. Like, it might be an Xbox. Oh, it's pretty cool, though. It, it might is be cool. an Xbox. It might be an it Xbox. Might be. <laughs> We're not shipping it to London, stick, though. So stick around. It might be an Xbox. It's not an Xbox. But it might be an Xbox. If I could get one, I think we would. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If we could get one to give away, we have given away Xboxes before. We've given away Xboxes. We have given at, away uh, Xbox at, at conventions before, at trade shows. We've been yeah. into a couple of yeah. those and given away Xboxes. But we have done it before. So never say never. All right. Like cool. That. So what's um, our first um, tip for interview tip that we can give away today? What's our first interview tip? Um, let's talk around, so stuff you can do before your interview. Okay. Um, so let's talk around the word practice because there's a few things okay. you can do around practice, right? So you can. Yeah, you can... I think what comes to mind right away is the first thing that you need to have is your elevator pitch. Right. Don't you think? Yeah. And so like that's a pre thing that you do, like that you you practice out, you give it to people. Because you're gonna um, get asked so a question qu that's gonna give you that in for that elevator pitch. There's a ton right. of different questions you can get asked around that that will yeah. allow you to like basically go into your elevator pitch monologue that you've practiced a million times yeah. and you have like down pat and you're gonna ace it and there's a joke in there and it's like really good yeah. and it you know. Yeah, and so it needs to be two minutes of why you're a fit for companies and um, your elevator pitch. So here's the opening question you, you typically get a lot. Hey, I'm Bobby. I'm interviewing you today, Kevin. And so tell me about yourself, you know? And so like, if you, exactly. if you go, some version well, of that. uh, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, you know, and last week I was early on. walking the dog, you know I mean? Like exactly. it doesn't help you. Um, yeah. and so we want to have an elevator pitch in and around, um, coding in and around you as a developer. And not like, yeah, I like to walk the dog on the weekends. It, that doesn't move the needle with the uh, the interviewer. Tell them why you're a coder, why you can do this. And so you need an elevator pitch. I'd say a couple of minutes. But it goes further than that, Kevin. And here's my big thing today is your elevator pitch also needs to segue into a demo. Yep. So like... If someone says, hey, tell me about yourself, you, you can say something like, hey, you know what? 
Um, for the last couple of years, I've been immersed in self-study or I've been at a boot camp or I've been to school um, learning how to code. And so on part of that journey, what I've been doing is I've been building lots of projects and my projects are based in ASP.NET and C Sharp and I've built three or four projects. So really what I am is I'm a lifelong learner. I like to code. I think it's it's my profession and for the foreseeable future, that's going to be my hobby. Let me show you one of the things I've been working on. Boom. Yeah, it's not it's not a question. You're not it's asking, a, do you want to see this? You asked just what like, I was like. Let me, yeah, let me show exactly. you. Exactly. Let me show you. <laughs> you, know, exactly. you know, so like I think that's that's number one. That's called what we call the open. Yes. And if you can stop just don't forget, the goal of your interview period at any point is to show them what you can do, right? That all they're yep. looking for is somebody who can do the job ultimately, right? They're looking for somebody yep. who can who can code. And you're having yeah. you're just basically doing the best you can to prove that you can code and the best yeah. way to do that is not just say oh, i'm a developer not just to show them show yeah. them the work that you've done show your portfolio yeah and so most people say tell me about yourself they immediately go to the things you do outside of work exactly and, they're like well i'm married i've got two kids i've got a dog i went hiking last week they don't yeah. really care about that stuff they yeah. may feign interest but they don't really care the and the the problem why I don't bring those up is is because something that you do that you seem is perfectly reasonable also can be seen weird to others and so you know right. so like Kevin That's I true. could go say yeah you know I have um That's I have true. a couple of pets one of them's a boa constrictor I love <laughs> love that and iguanas right <laughs> you know right and it That's seems fun. perfectly yeah. natural to you and they're like what yeah. you have a boa like, constrictor and and your kids are eight I mean like <laughs> what do you mean does it does it ever get out. <laughs> So like, um, so you can see how you can like put yourself into problems there, you know? So, uh, oh, we got Austin. Austin hey man. Austin's paid me $20 to remind me to turn on the music. Austin, thank oh, we got, you. Let's get some lo-fi beats in here, Kevin. Austin, thank you. Um, they're on. I think they're on now. Do I hear them? Yeah, I hear them. They're on now. I don't want to turn them on tomorrow. Okay. They are there. Some of them are coming now. But there you go. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate it. <laughs> just i tell you what austin just just dm me next time and remind me like hey kevin turn those uh turn those tunes on because that made me look bad no but uh I, th I think what you do is that when your personal life comes in it can be weird you the other thing too that we said that's real too and we and we laugh at it if if you're interviewing in columbus ohio and you mention you're a michigan fan you're probably not gonna get hired and you're, <laughs> you're like definitely oh, never do get that hired. i'm like you're definitely not getting hired you're definitely not gonna so, get hired after saturday's game you're definitely not gonna no get hired. it's just like <laughs> you know um that's kind of stuff you know um so like i think you keep it in and around you as a coder you as a co that's what they want to know about yep. um so i think that's kind of um the, my point number one so the elevator pitch is contained in and around you as a coder, the technology that segues into a demo, or at least the attempt to say, hey, you wanna look at this is kind of cool when I'm building. Um, and so they'll probably say yes or no. All right, so that's there tip number one. Um, right, cool. so there you go, uh, Bayless likes that tip. Elevator pitch segue into a demo, yep. All right, thanks, I hope it helps. I hope that's great. Um, it works um, every time. Let's see, it it works all the time, write, so. write these down, yes. That's, yes, you should. That's, that's and that leads tip. us into leads us next tip. the next thing is you need a notebook kind of like this, you know, with a, you know, it's got which, a little which, fancy. Which point. to be fair, is actually the one you use too, right at the moment. Huh? That's the one you're actually using, right? I'm using this right now. <laughs> so like, um, you know, so I've got a, a brand. Now you can go get these at uh, your your Office Depot store that won't have the fancy Coder Foundry logo on it embossed on there. But, uh, you know, it can definitely, you can get these anywhere. Or Kevin, you know what we could do? Jason Humphrey's uh, super chat. That's, Jason, thanks, thank you. Jason. Oh, I, I see a question, Jason. I'll get to it here in a second. I'll do it, it must right have after. not showed up on the screen for some reason. No, 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 it did. Why. He just asked the question before the super chat. I got it. Oh, ah, okay. That's I got good. you. All right, That's cool. I got it. Um, so, Let's give away one of these things, Kevin. Can we do that? Let's give away a notebook to somebody. We, we can. We can indeed okay. do that. Let me make sure I grab so Jason's question here before I... Do and that this. way, you know, if you win it, you can write down all your ideas in here. You know, yeah, so we have, some, we have some other tips around notebooks too we'll talk about here in a second. So if yeah. you want to win one, we will ship it to you. Uh, continental US only, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So all you've got to do 
to be in the running, I'm going to let Nightbot decide. So all you got to do is drop a note or drop anything in chat. A period, whatever, can be anything. Just now what we'll say is Nightbot's kind of finicky. He gets kind of angry. Don't like spam the chat. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah I don't use one then, thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't use all caps. He'll put you in timeout. You know, we can't control that. You know, so like just just put a chat in there. It's like, hey, I'd love a notebook or something like that. You know, um, that, that'll work. And then um, Nightbot will pick it and we'll announce that here in a few minutes. Um, and we'll give you the, the official Coder Foundry interview notebook. We think it's great. Um, it's here's, cool. the, here's the other thing about this too, this giveaway. So if you're a member of the channel, which I see some of you guys here are, um, yeah. you do get five times the luck to win. So if you're a channel yeah. member, you do get five times the luck to win. But unfortunately, <laughs> this is actually the last <laughs> time we can offer you five times the membership to win. Because apparently it's against, our ideal apparently it's against it's against Google's terms of service. So I'm gonna do it one last time because we said we're doing it anyway. So yeah, um, I see at least one person in there right now who has five times. Look, that's Jed. Jed is a channel member. Yeah, I saw um, BK in there earlier. See, He's a channel B member. And B so BK like, needs uh, to comment. I see Tully now too. Tully is a channel yeah. member. You have five times the luck too. Um, BK may already have one of these. I'm not sure, but you know he was. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. But you can get um, another one if you want to fill it up later. There you go. Throw um, it so up let's there. talk about why they're chatting in here. What else I could use this notebook for um, during the interview process? Number one, I think you should um, have a piece of paper um, written down in here is all the points that you want to come across on the interview. So yep. you could have the points of your elevator pitch in here. Um, definitely things that you want to cover. Yep. It's information uh, you, know, you can those, take into the interview, right? This yeah, is, you're yeah. bringing these into you with you, and you're and you're going to look at your notes, and then uh, you know that kind of stuff. The other thing that you want to do is if you're interviewing in person, okay, and maybe that's not as real as it used to be, but maybe a lot of those take place on Zoom. But if you're interviewing in person, here's one of the the tricks I use the notebook for, and I do this in sales uh, pitches as well. I write down, I put in a seating chart. Um, on the thing, I write it down on the piece of paper when I get in there and write down everyone's name above a little box in the position that they're seeing at in the room so I can remember their names. Um, so the worst thing in the world is to call someone the wrong name. You know, um, yeah. their name is, you know, Bill and you call them something else, Bobby or something like that, you know, because you mixed it up. And so this is what this kind of looks like for me. Um, you know, so it's like I'll put it up there, a little drawing. There so, you, you know, there you go. Kind of neat, right? So I'm using the book for that when I get in there. Um, and then on the next page, I'm going to have my notes of the, the points that I may want to talk about, um, things I want to remember, especially for your demos. So like if you're going to demo, have your demo script written down in here, like the points and the pages that you want to go through and what you want to talk about. Um, so that's, that's the other thing. Then you'll have another page here and every single question that you're asked, write it down every single one all right write down the question and then if you get it put a little check mark behind it if you didn't know the answer you felt it was weak put a little x beside it because we're going to come back and review those questions um, in another part of this and say what we do but every single question you need to write those down and so that you can go back and review those after the interview um, and to see kind of what people are asking so that if you fail at an interview, which all of us will, we're not going to get every, we're not going to win every interview. We can get better by reviewing these questions. Cause I promise you the questions get the same thing gets asked over and over and over again. And then you just got to know how to handle those questions, you know? Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Um, Hey Austin, I got your message by the way, make sure you comment one more time in chat after you've become your member so that it gives you your five times luck. It happens on the back okay. end, otherwise. He just got luck. some luck. <laughs> he got Austin his just, last Austin time, just bought his the luck. Last, <laughs> the last luck, the last luck. All right, so he had a super chat question. Let's um, let's get Austin's questions up there. What, what was his question? Um, we did, hold on. It was uh, it was actually uh, Jason's question. Oh, Jason's. Um, this one is what okay. I was talking about. Ooh, yeah, this is Jason's someone question. interrupted so, yeah, this is, your, your, your elevator speech. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do if you get cut off? <laughs> do the rest of the interview. 
So what I would do is, uh, um, what you have to do is collect your thoughts and then just physically, another reason I keep this book is once you're off your elevator pitch, you just turn the page uh, in your book uh, to where your note taking app and say, Hey, that's great. I mean, I realize he's got, he cut me off or whatever. And he's going to start talking about whatever he's going to talk about, take notes on the things he's talking about. And then if, um, he brings up a topic that you want to interject on, do yeah. that. And that's, that's what you got to do. So the next step is to listen to what he's saying and then try to interject your, um, knowledge or your portfolio back into that conversation. So, uh, um, don't throw it off. There are interviewers, and I watched it this week with uh, a bunch of people that interviewed at a company. The interviewer basically talked for 45 minutes to each five of these guys yeah. and then asked them, what questions do you have? And a lot of them goes, they were just like, <laughs> like deer in uh, uh, over, nothing. Right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, they didn't know what to do. And so like, you know, so that, that's where I was like, okay, you need to have a plan for that. You need to have your elevator pitch, pitch you down. But some interviewers do want to talk the entire time, Jason. That's that's that is a definite thing that they do, and it's not a good technique. It's just the way it is. You know, they shouldn't do it, but that's the way it is. Um, and so, what you have to do is figure out how do I interject points in there. So, take notes on what they're talking about, what they're saying, and then try to come up with a point where you can get a word in ed edgewise. Um, so, it is kind of rude for them to cut you off, but. Hey, that's the way it is. Don't let it rattle you. Don't show your displeasure. Say, okay, great. You know, thanks for, you know, and just physically turn the page in your book and then your brain will turn the page too. And you won't be as, um, confused because it can, it can rattle you. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. agree. It's tough once you've been sort of like you, you have this path and all of a sudden you're, you're veered off it. Um, yeah. that, can, that can be rattling, but it's also something that maybe that was intentional by him too. Maybe he probably is. He knows that's like a technique that's going to throw you off your game. And if he throws that in there, does that throw you off your game? Yes or no? You kind of have to be, I guess, prepared for it. Uh, yeah. be, be prepared to be interrupted because, you know, if it is a two yeah. minute monologue, it can get interrupted. It, if you make it yeah, short it, enough, though, chances are, and it's compelling enough, you won't get interrupted. So that's another thing to work on too. Is it interesting yeah. enough? Is it answering the question in a way that's not rambling? Yeah. So what I do see a lot is especially the person doing the interview could be a tech lead. There may be not be your direct report or anything like that, or someone that's high technical or a dev manager, maybe that be your direct report. They're used to being up front and doing all the talking and <laughs> they, they're Just not great it. listeners, but typically they're telling you what to do and listen to me, you know, listen to me. And so like, during the interview process, they, they still do that. You can use that to your advantage though. <laughs> so like, uh, and then I've, I've noticed both types, the talker type, which is wants to talk the entire time is, um, your question should be centered around like, Hey, what are you trying to build? What are you trying to do? Get that person talking about work, allow them to talk. And then you're, you're just responsible. Oh, that's interesting. That was, um, very similar to a project that I was showing you trying to show you earlier. But like I was doing with my bug tracker, it's very similar to that. And so what you're doing is saying, or you compliment the work, you compliment what they're doing so that you can build a rapport with him. And eventually he'll ask you a question maybe. <laughs> so, you know, but if they don't, that's not necessarily bad. It's not the best, but uh, they do like to talk. There you go. Yeah. It's not, I'm going to say, it's not professional. It's not. No, 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 no. It's not. No, yep, you have definitely. to. Basically, what I would say is, yeah, you have to deal with the cards you're dealt. You know, that's just <laughs> and what works. would you think about this, though? <laughs> I'm not too interrupt. You got to be. That's not a good plan, Clara. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not. That's probably not going to work out very well. Depends on how you handle it. I don't know. Maybe there is a specific. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even to... acknowledge it. Um, you have to understand, that's, that's like, uh, yeah. this is a habit that a lot of people have. Yeah, you're not you going to break it in the interview. You're, you're right. It's you, you. You're not going to break it in during the interview. Your job is to get a uh, get a get an offer. You know, it's not to teach him uh, proper etiquette in the in the social setting. So, like, it's not going to change. He's going to cut off people always. That's just a lot of tech people do because you know that's just how we're wired. Um, sometimes, you know, um, I do work on active listening skills a lot. I try to do that and try not to in, insert every single thought in my brain into every conversation I have. Um, and so, um, you know, it's definitely a skill that some dev managers, specifically tech leads don't have, um, tech leads aren't necessarily in charge of people. They're just 
commonly, commonly in their life, everyone comes to them, ask them questions, and they're commonly telling them all their yeah. their expertise, and that's not, how they're wired. And not then giving an, an answer interview, isn't like something in their the mindset, is it? Is, the interview is the reverse. I want to hear from this person, but they don't. They're not good interviewers, so they just talk about work and talk about what they're building, and and they're constantly talking about kind of themselves and that kind of stuff. So what you need to do is complement their work, their expertise, their their ability and tell them how you can help them out. So I think that's kind of what you do. Okay. I hope that helps, Jason. I'm going to roll for this giveaway. Here we go. Okay. Good Let's luck, see who's going to win. Let's use the use the bolt the look. Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to roll it. I'm looking tell me who wins. Oh, look who wins. Clara. That's hilarious. It's hilarious. You get a book. All right, uh, you know, we get a book. And so uh, uh, you can DM us somewhere. Um, just hit us, hit us up at info at Carter Foundry. And actually, just, Kevin just will... DM me on, um, you're on Discord. So just DM me on Discord. I think I actually have your or address Discord. already. Yeah. Um, DM me on Discord. But congratulations. All right, cool. All right, cool. We're going to give away another one too, though. Um, yeah, we're gonna give away another one. We got, we got a, I got a stacks of these we got things. Another one. So, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll give one away um, at the end. Okay, got another super chat, Taco Cat. Thanks, Jason. Jason thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, you. man. All right. So, that's, that's the double super chat. You know now. Double it's, super you, chat, Jason. Like, hold on. All right, like, cool. We'll put this up there because you get up there twice now. Look. Look at that. He wants the leaderboard. He wants that. He's coming after that leaderboard. I like it. All right. So if you got another question, any other questions in there, Kevin, that you oh, got? I got a ton. I got a ton. You want to go All through right, let's, some? Let's get some other ones. And yeah, then I'll good. give you some of my other advice and interject there too. Let's see what else we got. Okay. So let's see. Oh, here, here's a, here's a kind of an opening kind of leading question. Where do you see yourself in five years? We talked about okay. this a little bit yesterday, right? With kind of the yeah. reverse of this where, um, they're going to ask you the, this question, but you job hop a lot. That was kind of one of the things we were talking yeah. about, the angles on this. But what would be your answer to this one? So different things, what I would say, where do I see myself in five years? Um, what I would say, I'm definitely going to be writing software. That's what I would say, number one. I see myself in five years improving my skill set, um, bringing um, my expertise and my learning, my passion for coding. I'm definitely not changing what I'm going to be doing in five years. Um, I hope to be here in five years you know like that's what i would say i hope i'm i hope i'm here in five years i hope we're working together that's in five the years correct answer because i would really <laughs> like to contribute to whatever you're building you know if you already know you should have researched the company um that's that's what i would say i hope to be here in five years so that we're working together on you know the inventory control system or you know the next generation hololens or wherever you're interviewing um i think that's where you can say but you could say one thing that's not going to change is my passion for learning and my passion for um, software development. I think I can see that only growing over the next five years. Um, now, what do you see yourself in roles? And um, they could be something like that. What kind of role do you want? They may come back and follow up. No, do you want to be a programmer, a tech lead, or a project management person? And what I would say to this is, you have to be cagey about this. Write this down. I would say, well, if I work here, I want to be in the role that best performs for the company. I really like the technical things right now, five years from now, I would still think I'm going to be in a technical role, but if you need me in a leadership position, I would feel that and try to do the best thing. That's the best for the company. So the team can win. Bam. That's what you do. Yep. So then you can say, I want to be technical. I'll be a leader. If you need me to be, I'll do whatever you need. <laughs> I'll, I'll do you whatever know, um, you want. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like that way you're not, um, because like the reason I asked that question is they may just be looking for a programmer. And they're like, I need someone that's going to program for the next five years. Or they may have in their thought, like, I need someone that thinks big picture, that wants to like move up in the company. That's who I, that's the type of employee that I want. And so what you want to do is you have no idea what they're thinking. You have no idea what their thing is. You basically say, hey, I want to fit in wherever you Same need both. me the best. I see me being highly technical over the next five years. And even in a leadership position, I would still be that way. Uh, but like, if you need me in a leadership position in five years, that's where I would be. But if you need me to stay here, heads down right now, I really like doing that. That's what I really like to do. Um, I think that's, that's now the question we asked on Twitter yesterday was, and this is also a question in around I've job hopped a lot. I've been, yeah. I've only stayed one year over the last five years. I've had five jobs in five years. Yep. I've only stayed in one place. And so what if you get asked that, how do you answer that? And um, what I would say is, um, hey, you know what? 
every place that I've been at, I learned a lot of things and they're all positive experiences. Now I left for various reasons. So if you have a particular reason on the resume, we can discuss that. But here's the thing that I want you to understand. If I come here, I am hope I'm here for the next five years. And all of the things I've learned at all these different places, I've seen different business systems, I've seen different ways of building software, the different problems I've solved. I bring all of that experience to, to here and together we can build the next generation, blah, whatever. So look at it as a positive where you learned a lot of things and if they need something specific, you can talk about specifically, but never trash a company that you're at for, for you know, three minutes or whatever, because the boss is mean, don't, don't do doesn't that. All no those experiences are positive, the added to your knowledge base and all of that collective experience you're bringing to that company. And that's how you answer that question. There you go. So, hey, yeah, cool. Flower already has one of these, so we're going to re-roll it. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Flower. Thanks, so, Claire. So everybody yeah, who ever wins yeah. can, <laughs> can thank Flower for us. I'm going to re-roll. Here we go. Um, Watch your win look, again. Watch it it <laughs> won't because it won't let the same person win again. So Okay, good. I, there you go. Uh, I think it's Usmane. I hope I got it. Usmane Berry. Usmane. And hopefully you're in the US. Um, let me know hopefully where. Hopefully you're in the US so we can ship it to you. Um, DM me on Discord. If you're not on Discord, the link is in the description below. Um, if you are there already, DM me. I'm at Doyle on Discord and we will hook you up with that notebook. Or info awesome. at Code Founder if you want to send us an email. Yeah, or email info at Code Founder. But Discord's yeah. easier for me. Just yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. All right. What's our, what's our next question, Kevin? Uh, my next question is, uh, what do we got? Let's see. Oh, that one's, we'll do this. Um, Bailey says, how do you handle walking through the code hmm. in an in-person interview? Does it make you look bad to have notes in the interview? What about what you want to talk about also i don't think it looks it. bad i mean like nah, I think it's yeah no totally acceptable um, so how do i handle walking through code in an in-person interview so in person you can have a laptop and um so if you're talking about how do i display it hopefully they have a projector or something like that you can hook to um you can spin your laptop screen around is another thing you can do um if you have the money, you could buy a micro projector, a little small one and like project it on the wall. Um, but whatever you do to show the code, uh, make sure you can do it really quick. Like you can yeah. connect. Your really laptop's got to be like ready to roll. You'd literally got to yeah. lift up the lid and have it ready yeah. to roll. Yeah. And you got to know how to connect it to different projectors, whether it be HDMI or something like that, you know, um, also make sure your cabling in your bag is kind of set in case they have. A, a DVI connector, some kind of RGB connector, you know, yep. it's like an old school. Um, I don't think that's as common um, as, but you know, you never, know, you never um, know, hopefully. And also if you're on a MacBook, you need to have connectors anyway, because you're not going to have a USB-C um, connector. You're going to need like an HDMI adapter or a DVI adapter or an RGB adapter. I would say have all three of those in your bag yep. so that you can connect up to whatever you want. Um, and then, um, if you had a micro projector and if you had the money to do that, that's kind of cool. I, I do that a lot where I have a micro projector. Yeah. Th these things work better. Cool. Obviously, if you're working with like a panel of people and they all need to see it, if you're working with a one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, you can let you just kind of show them on your laptop. That's kind of a good way to see it. But if you're working with more people, yeah. you're going to, that might be a bad way to show it. So you need yeah. to think about these other ways to connect to whatever visual they have, or like you said, a micro projector or something. Yeah. So now the cool thing is, um, Here's what I want you to write down. When I'm demoing code, I only demo code that I've practiced. All right. Yeah. Don't so demo the things you wrote. Just walk that in. I want them to see. I'm not going to go anywhere else um, that I don't want them to see. I'm only showing the features that I want to demo. Um, and that way you can make sure that stuff works. Don't change your website the night before the interview, those kind of things make sure that it's all a functional. The worst thing in the world is to demo something and you get like a server error 500 or something like that, or a 404 that doesn't show up. So make sure that it, it functions and that um, you can effectively demo the things that you want them to see, which is a very small subset of the overall project. You want to demonstrate one point, don't confuse them with lots of things, demonstrate one point, and then just walk them through the code in the interview um, after you've demoed the feature. Um, so let me show you how that works. Let me show you the code and then you can walk them through the code. So I think, uh, 
I think it's pretty easy to do. You got to find a way to project project it though. So there you go. Right, well, I like I like I like this question, Troy. Uh, why do you want to leave your current job? Yeah. So you know the one that the way you don't answer this is he's <laughs> an evil jerk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's the embodiment of the devil. That's why I'm leaving. You know, I don't feel good about the satanistic practices of the company. So like that's a bad. I don't. Answer. I don't think that you do that. I, I think you can say. A lot of things you're saying, hey, you know what? I do like challenges and your challenge came up. I wasn't looking, but someone reached out to me or I saw the ad and I thought, hey, you know what? That sounds very intriguing. So that's why I'm here today to figure out if it's a good fit between me and you. Um, or you can also say things like, you know, currently we're on this stack and you're doing this stack and I'm really wanting to be on that stack. It could be a technology reason, but if it's a personal reason you're leaving, you basically can say, Hey, I saw your ad or the recruiter reached out to me and it sounded intriguing. And I think it's really cool. And I would love to learn more about it. See if we can find a fit between me and you. Yeah. I think the correct now, answer to this question isn't why you're leaving your current job. It's why I want your job. <laughs> exactly. That's, I, I that's, agree. that's kind of, that's, that's kind a better of, way of saying what I just yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of that exactly. That's exactly what you're looking for here. It's not, you don't you don't necessarily really want to leave your current your current job. It's just this seems like a better experience. Um, yeah. And if you and if you already have for whatever reason, um, let's say that you you you're not leaving your current job, but let's say that you got laid off or something. That's okay too. Yeah. You can explain that. Like let's say yeah. that you don't have a job right now and you're applying. Obviously the answer isn't like because your job looks great. Like it's a little bit of a different answer, but you can answer that you know with whatever yeah. the truth is. It's that that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But whatever happened at the last company, um, you got to spin that as a positive light or just don't even mention it and basically redirect to like, here's what I like about what you guys are doing. Um, and that's why I'm here because I like what you guys are doing. And I think it's interesting and I think it'd be fascinating. I'd love to work here. That's how I'd answer it. There you go. Hey, cool. Great question. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. And that will, obviously it's a common one too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jason has another one here too. Let's do another one of Jason's best prep. Uh, what should you focus on? I had a question. If console log two object literals and strict equal them, what is the result? I eventually got it, but took too long. Hmm. How long does it take you now to do that? Yeah, I bet you have that down. That's my question. Jason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, so yeah. like, um, it took too long. So like, um, basically you, you have to practice these interview questions. And then, uh, if you miss them, let's say you didn't, you eventually got it, but it took too long. Let's say you missed it. My advice here is in the follow up game. So like when you follow up with someone, you thank them for their time and you, and you can say, you know what? I thought about that question you asked and I was nervous or, you know, I didn't get to it so long. Um, here's a GitHub solution where I put this together. And I just wanted to send that back to you so that I, I can know how to do this. Um, so if you miss a question like this, Jason, go research it, finish it, get it working and send it back to them within 24 hours. Um, we firsthand ask. see this work. Yeah. We've seen somebody yeah. do this, loved it in the interview, sent the solution back, got the job. Literally based on, they told us it was literally based on the fact that they sent the solution after the fact. That's yeah. the reason they got the job. Yep. Yep. Okay, do uh, another one. Look back here. Let's see. Um, okay, close that one. Let's see. What's Ridge Raider say? Every time I've been asked that, I ask how long it took. Oh, okay. It took, uh, how long it took them in the company to get where they are? That's that's. I think, I think that goes well for about any question, right? If you can kind of, yeah. I think this goes for a lot of things. If you can have them talking about themselves. Oh, and actually look, Bayless does say this too. Cause I think this is another thing have you having them talk is probably the best thing to happen. If you make them talk about themselves, they may feel better as a good interview. And that kind of does yes. that too. It's like you're turning the yes. question around and asking them kind of the same question and having them talk yeah. about what they've done with the company is a good technique. Yeah. And so the, the thing too, is I, I quote this to dating. So like, if you go on a date and you just talk about you the entire time, um, the girl's not coming back or the guy's not coming back around, you need to ask questions to the person you're interested into about what they do and how they behave and that kind of stuff. So like, um, 
you know, it's literally enough about me. What about you? You know, um, you need to get, to, you need to get that somehow out in the interview and let them talk about what they do. Yep. Um, so here's a good point. <laughs> um, so, uh, interviewers always keep asking those stupid jazz questions like no triple equals undefined zero triple equals false see these are kind of like some of those like yeah these are the gotcha style questions right this is just mm -hmm. code trivia like whether it you is can remember so like, this um, there's no. like seven to ten falsy statements in um javascript yeah so if you're seeing that a lot you should know those right off the bat you know but it is just stuff. code trivia like you don't even yeah. have to know the context of that to know the end that yeah. you could teach somebody who knows nothing about code those 10 things and they can answer those questions that mean they're a good coder no it doesn't it's just yeah. code trivia it's dumb if they are asking yeah. those questions it's because they can't think of better ones they yeah but if you see these questions what i would say write them down and then um you should know them, them within 24 yeah. hours with with some um with a an app that displays like if i got asked zero triple equal false um then i would put that in there and then i would follow that up also with all the falsity statements in all of javascript you know go find a in go find a medium article copy it down and like put them all in a in an app cinema cinema application um that does it i would even the put true a answer is, around is the true answer is you can just google it because exactly. again it's, it's code I mean, trivia yeah. so right so handling nulls is important. Handling zero is important. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's an interesting one. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, so Imran says, regarding portfolio, what if someone is working with a software company that uh, do not allow employees to publicly show its software applications, financial application? And this could be anything. This is, this is, I mean, this is common, right? Yeah, this is super common. So you got to build your own, you got to build your own apps though on the side then. Like yeah. you just have to. I mean, you can talk I about know, kind of what of you work. worked on to a certain point, right? You can say, yeah, like, but you I can did talk this, about this, what you worked on, you what it did. Yeah. Um, you definitely can talk about those things. Um, what I would say though, if someone asks you about an app that you did the software company, um, a financial application, for example, know a portion of that application cold. Like, so one of the things that I do as an interviewer, and I know a lot of interviewers do is I'll ask you, I'd say, Hey, Ryan, what are you working on at that such and such company? And you're like, Oh, we're working on a, a financial application. And then I would follow up. What does it do? Okay. It does this and this and this. Tell me about a feature that you implemented inside the application. That's my three things. What I'm trying to understand is, did you actually work on this? Were you <laughs> right. coding on it? Were you a PM? Were you not really coding on it? Didn't really don't know how it works. And if you don't know how it works, I'm hiring you for a purely technical role. That's a red flag that you um, you're not very good at what you're doing. Now, the the best answer you can give is like in detail. Tell me how some of the code works just from memory. I think that would be the best way to do it. You know, walk me through a particular uh, feature or a ticket that came in and you fix a bug in it and what did you have to do and how to resolve it. Um, really knowing the feature set of the application inside and out is good. Um, so like if you've been working in a place for a while, that's another thing you do to prep is like, hey, let me look at the apps that I'm building and what what piece in this app can I just pretty much commit to memory so that I can talk about it. So I hope that helps. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. Let's do another round. Yeah. We're coming to the end. Let's do another giveaway. We'll give another giveaway. We'll give away another one of these beautifully embossed books from Coder Foundry, <laughs> complete so, with a pen. So if you want to win, throw anything in chat. Throw um, anything in chat right now. And we'll anything, it, does, it doesn't really matter. Anything and it will, Nightbot will uh, add you to the, uh, to the list of potential Winners. Give you a couple of minutes. We'll ask her one question while you're chatting up. So let's see. Yep. So throw it in. Yeah, 50, it's a 15 minute window. So we'll do it at a couple, yeah. a couple minutes. Um, let's look. Um, I don't have another interview based one. Okay. Uh, we'll just go for this one. Uh, Bob says, just starting out as an aspiring dev. When do I know I'm ready to start applying? <sighs> um, depends on what you're applying for. Uh, so like if you're applying for a front end role, can you build front end type things? If you're doing a full stack job, uh, can you build a full stack application from scratch? 
um, I think that's a good case to say, Hey, I'm kind of ready. You know, I can do this. Um, I think that's how, you know, so build your portfolio of projects. And if you're building projects out in your portfolio, start showing that portfolio and start applying. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be a genius to know every single thing, but, um, you do have to know how to build um, websites and things like that. If you're aspiring to be a web developer. That's it. That is it. Um, let me answer this real quick. This, uh, does it have an overlay with the music you're playing in the video and night but announce it? I don't know if we can actually have night but announce it. It's through, so th the music's actually through, um, um, vmix. So it's not streamed anywhere. So I'm not sure. That's a good thought, Austin. We'll look Maybe into though. it and see. I'll look into it, Austin. Yeah, there might be something StreamYard I can do with can, it. Streamyard uh, can help us out. I think there's yeah. stream elements. Yeah. So there is, a, there is. So yeah, so, yeah, it's through Streamyard, but I'm playing it through a playlist in VMix. But there might be a way. For, so I see a playlist. Obviously, there might be a way for me to publish that playlist through or something. Yeah. Maybe I'll look at it, Austin. It's a good idea, though. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah our music comes from Soundstripe. So Soundstripe. That's Soundstripe. it. Yeah. Yeah. Soundstripe. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, let's talk about this then. Because here it comes. So you, you you interviewed me. I did, <laughs> uh, but obviously and I it wasn't keep saying why he won though. I keep saying why he won, and it was. And Kevin keeps telling me it was by accident, but it goes <laughs> proof the point that it it worked anyway. Um, so right, we brought right. Kevin in to be a video producer, right? You know, so like at Coder Foundry, we we're trying to produce video, and what we were trying to do at the at the time is vastly different than what we're doing now. But like uh, at the time, we wanted to produce lots of video commercials, that kind of stuff. And so yeah, like, it was more like, yeah, it was more very commercially stuff. It was very like little video -y stuff. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, head it wasn't shot, YouTube what talking head videos of students, things like that. So that's what we we're going to do. Also help us somewhat in the marketing department. At the time we had a marketing manager, we also had a graphic designer and we we're bringing in video production because, you know, it, it's hard to find people. Typically we can find a graphic designer, um, or you can find a video producer that can like do graphics, yeah, but when you get the graphic the guy, they yeah. typically <laughs> yeah. couldn't edit or shoot video to save them, save their lives. Yeah. So like, you yeah. know, we were just trying to do it. Yeah. So he, um, he showed a video that he worked on that was a commercial for a community college. Yep. It was kind of like cool. It was like bullseye hit really, wasn't it? It was a bullseye hit. And you know, Kevin always said it was luck, but like, that's luck. what we were looking for. And therefore we hired based on that. And so the thing that you can learn from that is if you align your stack, the types of things that you're building with the tools you're building with what the company's doing, it's, it's, it typically gives you a better uh, chance of winning that instead of they don't have to think, oh, he's going to translate over to it. Um, you know, and so like if you're interviewing a video producer and you're like, okay, what, tell me what you've done. And you're like, oh, I've only done art house, grind house films. That's all yeah, I've done. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay, we probably don't align here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, yep. yeah, you know, you want to go do some other types of video. Um, so that, I think that's that's and that's why I won though. It was hit us a bullseye. Yep. So it's kind of cool. And that's it. And that's yeah. And that's something that we we still talk about today on the technical front. So and I know you know at any point that's that's what you need to do both in my kind of my realm in the creative realm and yeah. in development. It kind of works in it. Definitely works in both. This is the reason why I think people resistant to building a portfolio is just like odd to me because in your profession, you have to have one. There's yeah, no way you're yeah, getting yeah. a job unless they, you can show something that you've built, edited yeah. and You can't done. just say, of course I can make videos. Yeah, it's I like, can make videos. <laughs> oh, okay. You get the job. Awesome. Great. Come on in. Yeah. That's, 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 now, what is difference in video production is typically we don't, and when you interview for them, you don't hand them a camera and say, hey, make me a 30 second commercial. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. There's no, right. There's no, generally, there's no on site like um, uh, test. Proof. There's no, yeah, yeah, there's exactly. no proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no like, they're not going to give you like, hey, here's 50 10 second clips. Cut me a thing right now. It's, I've That <laughs> never happens. It could, exactly. but it's never happened. Like, yeah. you know, that's not, that's not What's a the command practice. for uh, scrolling the timeline in exactly. Premiere Pro 7? That's, yeah, yeah. What's what's the keyboard <laughs> shortcut for, like, speeding up the ramping up the speed? It's like, does it matter? I don't know. Uh, muscle memory. I just, I just click it. Yeah, that doesn't happen. That, there's never anything. Yeah. So it is a little bit different in that sense. We haven't fixed that in tech yet. So, like, you know, but I, I think we can. If you sh keep showing portfolio projects, you'll you'll do a lot better than trying to memorize, you know. Yep. Zero, triple, equal, false in quotes, you know, so. There you go. Okay, let's do uh, another giveaway. Let's see here. I got it. Uh, 
is ready to roll here. So I see. All right, one one question here. Um, one yeah, yeah, one more. I see both Austin and Jed uh, here with the extra luck. So I'm gonna re-roll. Let's see what we get. Two wins here. And when this comes up, Troy. But I see it. There you go. Troy, Troy. our friend Troy. My man Troy. You're the owner of a He's book. All right, Troy. DM us sure. up, man. Thank there you, you for. Oh, um, He's been here a long time. I, you know, he won some stuff, so that's good. Yeah, cool. awesome. So, hey, Troy, if you're not on Discord, um, links down below. I think you are, though. Um, just DM me on them, at Doyle, with your details, and we will get it shipped out to you. All right, cool. And then let's do, uh, let's do one more here. Okay. One for the road. Uh... Oh, not quite related, but I like this anyway. Um, well, he says, we still have browsers on desktops, but we create the code that run AR VR. Will we code in an AR VR dev environment? We haven't really talked about this, have we? We haven't thought about this. I haven't really thought about it. So here's the thing, maybe. Yeah, I think initially, maybe. yes. Um, so like when you're looking at things like the toolkits that are out there now, you wear that be Unity um, or even something like something new that microsoft has out it's called stereo kit which we're going to talk about um, on tuesday yeah we'll talk about that but th all of those have you can develop in 2d which means that you have a screen that simulates yep. a 3d world i see that initially um where it's going to be that's how it's definitely going to run but if you've ever built an ar vr headset you have to build it and run it in the headset and so by default, you spend a lot of time with the glasses on because you got to see how it's going to render, how it's going to look. Does it behave right? Is it placed right? So I think initially you have both that are going on, um, but I think more and more, um, well, you may wear glasses a lot, you know, wear the headset a lot, you know, but like I can see how that could be tiring at the end of the day. And for that use case, a browser or not a browser, but a giant monitor is better. Um, but We'll see how that evolves. But currently right now, I think you're going to be building most of it with a desktop application um, or a desktop and a big screen. But I agree, though. Yeah. I think that environment also changes because you're right. You do have to kind of see it in context, right? It's like running your app, right? It's like running VS yeah. Code, coding up your yeah. app and then running it. You run it in the browser to see what it looks like, right? So this is just the next level of that. You run it on the screen you're using it on, and then you yeah. run it on a phone, right? So you run it on a, either a virtual phone or you're looking at it on your phone on to see what it yeah. looks like, see if it's responsive or whatever. You're going to have the same thing. You're going to kind of run it on the screen that it gets viewed on. So you're going to be looking yeah. in the glasses to see like, what does that look like? How does that like, how does that actually work? Does it behave right the way I thought it would? You know, yeah. so the emulator is one thing. The real life is always different and always better. Yeah. Um, you know, the same thing if you're building something for an Xbox. Yeah, you have an emulator running on your machine, but then Eventually, you got to push that to a real live Xbox and right. play it to see how it's working. You know. Yep. Yeah. Same thing's going to happen here. For sure. Yep. Same thing's going to happen here. Cool. Um, okay. We're just a tiny bit over, so let's uh, let's rock and roll. Thank you for the uh, taco money today, Jason um, and Austin. We super appreciate it. Yeah, and then uh, just like and subscribe. Maybe give us a couple of likes here if you're still here. We got five so far. Five so likes. likes. Is that all we've got? We only got five. Yeah. Really? Five likes. Give us a like. That's, Come on. Oh, please. You know. No, we don't. And we have a lot more than five up. likes. Give us a sub up. Uh, let's get Kevin that hundred thousand plaque. So if you, if we're still working on it, we're about twenty five k off now. So yeah, you know, grammar in the house. Just sub to the channel. All right, I like it. Po grammar. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. And uh, so anyway, we'll see you on Tuesday. Good luck, and uh, keep coding. We'll see you Tuesday. We'll catch you guys later.